I'm on my way to a remote part of the country to meet a community in crisis. 300 kilometres north of Adelaide, the city of Port Augusta is known as the crossroads of Australia due to its crucial road and rail links. It's also the home of the Adna Mutna people. About 3,000 receive millions of dollars in royalties each year from mining on their ancestral lands. But some say they're seeing little of it. These women are too scared to speak up alone, so they're meeting as a group. You don't know where the money's going? Yeah. Like you see all these dollar signs. Where? And I mm. see people driving around flash cars, yep. houses they got, children's got a house. Leonie Brady asked for help when she was diagnosed with cancer. I was a cancer patient, 2016, asked for help and they said they just didn't have any money to, to help. My grandchild was sent over to Sydney. We asked for help for him for leukaemia. Mm. They never gave him nothing, a little baby. We felt so let down. Being a young adjunct woman, um, I want to be treated equally. I want to be treated fair. I feel empowered now with Juzia that we can, we can talk to you. You know, we never had this opportunity. Like thousands of other Indigenous communities across the country, Adnamutna set up their own corporation called Atla to handle mining royalties, grants and other business interests. Atla has a complex structure with non-profit trusts and charities, but its purpose is clear, to provide services and economic development and prevent poverty. They failed the Adnamutna people. Elder Tiger Mackenzie believes there's been decades of mismanagement. They felt their responsibility around supporting the rest of the Vajramatna people, majority of them I'll say. That is uh, and has been a very, very successful organisation and a very professional organisation. Vince Coulthard has been at Atla from the start. As its longest serving chairman and CEO, he defends Atla's record. There's a lot of mud uh, slung at Atla because people have got, people are listening to dissident, dissatisfied little, you know, people. And I think that's wrong. Uh, these few that's been uh, rocking the boat for Atla. The federal body that regulates Indigenous corporations, known as ORIC, put Atla into special administration a year ago after it found serious failings in its record keeping. Can I, can I have order, please? Please. Um, so I'm the chair for this meeting and I'll decide what's happening, okay? So Today, hundreds of people have come to hear an update from the special administrators and regulator about what's gone wrong at Atla and how to fix it. Um, as we said, there's some, been some serious problems with the governance of Atla. Bevan Mailman is one of the administrators addressing the crowd. We're appointed to clarify and set a good foundation so that the Adyamatna people can rise up, can rise up strong economically. The accountant hired can't track how all the money has been spent. There's information missing in terms of invoices, there's information missing in terms of minutes, there's information missing in terms of payments to directors. Is it director's fees or is it something else? There's not that information available. I pay my way. I paid for my own house. I paid for my car. Forensic accountant firm Cordamentha was brought in to investigate where the money went. They looked at bank accounts and concluded payments to individuals have largely flowed to certain family groups. They have no idea what those payments relate to. Former CEO Vince Coulthart is in the crowd. I mean, I could sit down and go through this all. But the reality is, if you don't ask the information, you don't get it. And, and what, what needs to happen, what needs to happen, what needs to happen, it's all been in the financials. And there's a transparency problem, there's no doubt. So what do you say about the, the regulator that says the systemic, chronic, there's no paper trail, it's hard to understand where the money's going? 
I don't know where they get that from, the regulators. So it's not just the regulators, it's the administrators and the, the forensic accountants. I don't know where the administrators get that from. Because if you go onto the ORIC site and you can see all the documentation, you'll see that every audit is there, audited financial statements there and annual reports, uh, annual reports are there since 2000 and 2011. I, I actually had a look at them yesterday and I couldn't find them. I found some reports from 2013 and some from 2020 and there were a lot of other things but I didn't find many financial accounts. Well, they're all there unless they've been removed because I've got them here. There's a separate trust called Rangeley which manages the distribution of royalties. The administrators estimate up to $40 million has flowed into it and some in the community say it isn't distributed properly. There'll be possible questions for everyone. We do know it is in the millions of dollars that's gone through Rangeland, tens of millions of dollars. The decisions that were made to inform where the money went um, was, was very lacking. Selwyn Button runs ORIC, the Indigenous regulator. With a budget of just $8 million a year, and only 40 staff to oversee more than 3,000 community corporations and no powers to issue fines, he needs to pick carefully which complaints to dig deep into. We have limited information about, uh, about Rangeley. Um, it was set up to, to receive, um, receive trust money and, and royalties from agreements um, on behalf of the Atla people. And so, given that it's a separate entity that sits outside uh, the purview of ORIC... He says there's evidence some families are benefiting disproportionately. I believe there is evidence uh, in the Forensic Audit Report that does show that there was a disproportionate distribution of royalties um, for the other, for other month of people. The regulator is hoping the government will increase his powers to issue fines and examine opaque trusts like Rangeley which handle native title revenues. The situation at ATLA um, is not, is, is not a, a unique one. Um, we certainly, and, and, I must, and I must stress that as a regulator um, that works in the space of focusing on corporate governance failures, um, we have seen it before and we have seen it in other, cor in other corporations. If the voice has been taken away from the item of the nation because the people up the front here are the item of the people making decisions. And he's shutting us down. He is shutting us down. You call the Indigenous regulator racist. Why would you call it racist? What, what is racist about this regulator? What's fundamental, fundamentally wrong about it is the kinds of requirements on Aboriginal organisations. Um, as I said, that we're the only, we're, the, um, we're Aboriginal uh, organisations around the country, uh, um, closely monitored and... and and they want to interfere with all our activities. 60% of the staff that sit in this organisation are Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people. ORIC is not a racist organisation. There's been years of secrecy surrounding the trust company Rangeley, which handles the royalties from the mining company. How much has gone through Rangeley? Um, um, are we to talk about Rangeley or Atla? No, well, it's the same thing, isn't it? No, it's it? not. Atla, Atla is the only one the Traditional Lands Association. Sure, Rangeley but... is a is a trust. Rangeley looks after a trust. Do you think Rangeley is transparent enough? Um, you know, Adele, I, I, was, I was I thought I was here to talk about Atla. I'm not. You are. I'm, it's I'm, just I'm it's part of. About, uh, Atla is not Rangeley. Sorry. People are getting confused with Rangeley and Atla. It was a question because the administrators had wanted, had said that it should come under Atla. Yeah, the And so it was a legitimate question to ask. Well, it's... But if you don't want to pursue it, that's fine. No, no, well, fine. the administrators can ask for what, whatever, but they're asking the wrong people. Just before this story was completed, a forensic report was leaked to 7.30, examining seven Westpac accounts spanning eight years operated by Atla and its charity arm. $1.3 million had been paid to unknown parties, while a total of $1 million was paid to directors and related parties. It identified at least $700,000 had gone to the Coulthart family and its related entities, which is much higher than any other family groups named in the report. 
The regulator and the administrators say money has flowed largely to certain family groups. Why do you think they're referring to you? Oh, well, they're probably referring to coltards. Um, you know, one can say, I suppose I used this term before, um, the Smith family buying property all around Australia. But there's a whole lot of different family, you know, they're not necessarily, the Smith family aren't necessarily connected. Same with the coltards. Some Udnamutna people say your family benefited disproportionately. How do you respond to that? I'm not sure what they mean by that. My family looked in back in 86, took time out to um, and um, establish a, a cultural tourism business. And that's been operating since that time. Um, I think people are, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a um, tall puppy syndrome in my community. Atla has a separate company called Crammond that offers financial assistance for hardship and health. We spoke to a, a woman who um, said she had cancer and needed um, chemo treatment and needed help. Mm -hmm. So she went to Atla asking for help and was knocked back. Does that shock you? Well, it does shock me. Is that it fair? Shock um, I, I'm not... I'm not familiar with the case you're talking about, but, uh, um, you know, if they, would have, if they went to Atla, Atla would have directed them to Crammon, um, because Atla is not equipped to do, to, to do that. Um, so I can understand Atla saying no, um, or not providing that support, because they would have said, you need to make a, a request to Crammon and he is the appropriate form to fill out and so on. So yeah. who decides whether you get the whether your case is worthwhile or not? In this case would be the board. There isn't an endless bucket of money there. Sometimes people will just miss out by a week. You can see there's a few people who do get the money, others don't. And to me that's wrong. It's really important to a Royal Commission into like Aboriginal community the funding bodies that fund the Aboriginal communities and how they do it and how they manage it. Oh, you're a heavy girl, aren't you? Oh, we've been waiting for answers for years and years. A lot of us, we struggle, 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 but we feel that hopefully what we're going through now will come to an end soon and this struggling will stop. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.